Our Collision 2017 coverage is proudly powered by Monster Products. Find the headphones and speakers that match your style at pluggitslive.com slash monster. We have our next guest here. Uh, how are you doing? Please introduce yourself to our viewers. Very good. My name is Andy Meadows with Bud URL from Austin, Texas. Oh, nice. And what exactly is Bud URL? So Bud URL, we're uh, in the exciting world of link management. So you mentioned uh, not much B2B, but uh, that's who we are. So that's our space. Okay. Fantastic. Apparently that's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh, so uh, what kind of link management are we talking about here? Are we talking um, like uh, bit.ly kind of stuff? Or are we talking more complex or right. focus on stats? What are we talking about? Yeah, so uh, bit.ly kind of stuff. So that's okay. um, it's a space we play in quite a bit, but um, our, our view of the world is a little bit different. Um, so we, you know, links are really the, connect, connect, the connective fiber that really ties together all the campaigns that people work on today. So they spend millions of dollars on the assets, millions of dollars on the audience, and the link between the two is often overlooked. Uh, so what we do is we make sure that those links are measured, managed, and monitored. So that they're the, the perfect link and that they're strong in that, uh, that whole engagement. Wow. Okay. So you're talking to some people who create a lot of links? <laughs> yes, I would imagine. <laughs> so how would we use your product, say, for our news and show stuff? Right. right. So, yeah, so a simple example. So I shared with my team uh, your join us link uh, that I was given. And so that gets shared out to all of our social media. But um, the real question is when you're sharing that, so everybody who clicks on that link, it'd be great if you were feeding Google Analytics, Adobe Site Catalyst, any of those platforms, um, exactly where you were at, what you were doing, who you were talking to, what the, the, that particular conversation was about. Um, and if you're using BudRail to do that, you can feed all that data real time. And so even though that exact same short link is what gets shared uh, through social and whatever it might be, we would actually backfill all that data real time into that URL. So as your, your editing team can go out there, as the next guest comes on, they update that information. So you can go back and say, well, exactly how many clicks did we get for which person we were talking to, what day of the show, et cetera. Um, so you can do all those things, but it's very manual. Right. The other side is, uh, say one of those links breaks. We notify you when that's broken. Uh, say that those tags need to get updated. We do that. Um, so you're getting, not only are we feeding those analytics to Google or whatever else you're using, you also have a real-time dashboard with us. So for us, again, it's, it's taking what is that simplistic link that you have, but that's really, there's so much logic that's packed into that single click, as so we're really delivering that to our customers. In real time. In real time, wow. exactly. Okay, so what all kind of information am I getting? Because I know, I know what I get from Bitly. It's... Right. Sometimes it's detailed, sometimes it's not. Right. De and definitely, depending on whether you're using the free or the paid version, right. the amount of information you get is very different. Exactly. So what kind of information am I getting from you guys? So in the, in the matter of that click, we can tell where in the world you're coming from, okay. what language you speak, what device you're using, uh, what model of device you're using. The, the depth Ooh. of that is, is dramatic. Jeez. Um, the time of day, the IP address you're coming from, what network you're on. Um, everything you can imagine, if you take that single click, all that data is unlocked behind the scenes. Uh, so what we do is we elevate that data, make it easy to decipher what's working. And so we have some customers that care more about some pieces of that data than others. Sure. Right. Um, even down to the point of, uh, you know, if you wanted to inject a cookie, you can do that, whether it be our cookie or a third-party cookie like Facebook. So if you're providing a link to, you know, you're doing a direct link to a YouTube Live, um, you might want to cookie that person with a Facebook pixel so that you can go back and retarget that person later on. So we make all of that possible and very easy for a marketing perspective to do that, yet at the same time do it in a way that developers are happy because they need this kind of infrastructure. They don't want to spend all their time writing code to create these links and track of them all, but the marketing team really needs to do that kind of thing on a regular basis, real time. I don't have days or weeks to, to spend building that out. They need to do it right now. Okay, so let's, let's say at the end of this event, Mm -hmm. Each one of these interviews gets published individually with a write-up and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. How do I get these links? Am I, am, can I feed into a, like an API and get a ping back on the link? Do I go into the dashboard and put them in one at a time? How does that work? 
yes on both, both and, uh, <laughs> and a little more. So fantastic! You can do it manually. You can go into our dashboard. There's you know self-service, web-based analytics, whole thing. Uh, you can import them directly. So you might want to take a spreadsheet. Here's all the speakers we had during the show. Mm -hmm. okay. You can import those directly into our platform, including all those different elements. Um, you know, whatever you want to feed to Google Analytics, all those different UTM parameters, build okay. that in your spreadsheet, upload that directly. Okay. You can also do it through the API. So you can feed that. If you had a database, you want to feed that real time. If you're typing everything up and you hit the button right before the next guest comes on, feeds directly into the link. At the end of the show, we get the write-up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, you want to have, we do a lot of work with influencer marketing. So a lot of our, our bigger brands use influencers. Those mm -hmm. links that they give to them, they want to know which ones are working. If they're sharing it on Facebook or Twitter, they want to know exactly which, they share the same link on both platforms, which one actually generated the most value for right, us. Right, right. So again, we're unpacking all that. We're making it very simplistic on the front end for those influencers, but the, the backfill of data behind the scenes is just ginormous. So one of the things, uh, obviously I have a personal connection to this, so <laughs> one of the things that I've noticed about Bitly is that Dark traffic sometimes is through the roof. There's, they don't know where they came from. I know the link was only shared on Facebook and Twitter. Right. And people probably aren't like copying and pasting the link in an email or something. So they've somehow they've just totally lost <clears throat> the information of where the right. what the source is. Um, do, do you guys experience that too? Is that people using Tor? What? what? Yeah, so, so dark is dark, um, and it's kind of hard to see what you can't see. But sure. the reality for us is, what are the things that you can see? So you look at, start looking at the details around that. You start looking into, well, was there a referrer at all? Uh, is there an IP address that that network came from, where that traffic came from? Uh, so if you really, if you find that the vast majority of your traffic is dark traffic, then you have the ability to go in and start analyzing other aspects of that. Sure. Um, if you're setting cookies, is that particular cookie then surfacing someplace else? Can you connect the dots between two different links that are actually tied back to the same person, same device? So, so you can't th extrapolate so that into... Uh, so there's other ways to go back and find that information. Exactly. Or to, to research and make correlations. Right. You, and you may not find all the answers, but the sure. real, real question is, if you have a specific traffic source it's coming from and you're looking for, what is the depth of information around that? Uh, there are other ways you can kind of back into other insights around it. You may not know the actual answer, but you're going to get three different names towards the same place. So get some insights to that. Gotcha. Because that's, that's one of the things that is frustrating to me sometimes. Like right. the, the link for signing up for this went out exclusively on Twitter and email. Mm -hmm. I go in and I look, more than half, they have no idea where it came from. Right. None whatsoever. My guess is 80% came from Twitter. They say 25. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, well, and there's, there's other aspects of that, too. You think about where Twitter, Twitter also has this odd thing with referrers, where if you're using a Twitter app, there's no referrer tied to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they're coming through the browser, you'll see Twitter, t.co, et cetera. If you're coming from an app, unless that app is specifically feeding you that, that information, you're likely not going to see a referrer. Oh. But now if you were to split out those sign-up links and you had one for Twitter and one for email, then you would know exactly which links were being clicked because they wouldn't have any overlap. Right. And then, so, like, if it's, if it's coming from maybe TweetDeck, it's not, <clears throat> or Hootsuite or something like that, the referrer is going to be all screwed up. Exactly. Again, it oh. all depends on that source. <clears throat> Everybody has the option of, of serving that to you or not. So it's really flexible. Got it. So how long have you guys been going? So our particular product was originally created eight years ago. Right? In fact, almost nine years in, in August. Ooh. So it's been around quite a while. Um, but it's, it, again, it's evolved quite a bit. You think about the space that we're in, it's evolved. It started out a bunch of free services out there, shortening links. Our view very early on was we thought that this was a really viable business, uh, that professionals are going to be needing it over time. So we went to the paid plans right away. Um, we kind of built our model a little bit differently over the years, where we look at who are the organizations that professionally need this kind of services. So we tend to work with organizations that recognize that there's value in those links, uh, and they're looking for something a little, little better than what they can get off the shelf. And what kind of price point are we looking at to be able to use this service? Yeah, so we have two different models. We have our, our pro plan. Okay. So those start at $100 per month. And that scales up to $600 per month. You can sign up online, credit card, no contracts, month to month. And then we have our enterprise platform. Uh, and that starts at $1,000 per month. We do annual contracts. 
Uh, then there's a bunch of different add-ons that we offer. So everything from uh, whitelisting and blacklisting of links uh, to single sign-on, uh, audit trails, uh, different functionalities around URL builder, building out those links that tie into Google Analytics, uh, Adobe Site Builder or Site, uh, Site Catalyst, things like that. Um, and so you could spend upwards of ten dollars to $20,000 a month if you wanted to on those uh, link management. All depends on users, number of brands, and so forth. So it will sure. scale up to the enterprise. And we tend to, most of our customers are large organizations. Uh, there are people like Coca-Cola and Airbnb. Um, but then if you back into, we have a lot of brands that just understand the value of having those properly tracked links. So that's why, from our view, we want to make sure that the platform is accessible. Uh, that's why at $100 a month, we can still provide a good service, provide a good, good value around that and a good sure. product, but it's still accessible. And, and what kind of URL capabilities do we have with this? Like, um, my guess is that it's, it's custom links, right? So right. Uh, is it preset domains? Can I import my own? You can use any domain you want. Uh, so we, in fact, every one of the plans we offer includes a free branded domain. So you can register whatever domain you want, point it to us. So it's always your brand, not ours. Okay. Um, you can create vanity links. Uh, there's not, it's not case sensitive, so you can't have somebody go in and create a link that looks just like yours with one case offset, uh, and then point to something completely different. So it's all about your domain, your privacy, your security. You can't add a plus sign to any of our links and see any of the analytics around it. Uh, so we believe that <laughs> your data is your own. Uh, nobody else should have access to it. So it's all about you, your data, your brand. Uh, we're just simply providing that service. That's why you pay us for it. No reason for us to try to make money behind the scenes. Fantastic. If people want to find out more about your platform, how can they do that? BudURL.co or find us on Twitter at BudURL. Wonderful. Great. You and I are going to be having a conversation <laughs> <laughs> after, <laughs> after the conference for sure because... Uh, this is great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You Appreciate much. it. It's been a pleasure. Have a good rest of the day.